Okay, we're grateful that you stayed there uh, for us this morning. Uh, Daily Guide has a big one. Tardy girls kidnapper arrested in Togo. Front page of the Daily uh, Guide. Ayariga Des Amidu. That story is also there. The finder says cocoa floor price. Ghana Ivory Coast face bias. Processes in Accra today uh, were told. The two countries uh, moved to dictate cocoa prices. The Times, approval ratings of MPs, 180 said to be voted out in 2020 election for non-performance. That's a research from the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana. Uh, certainly an issue to talk about. Those are some of the stories. The president is calling for change in governance structure of the International Labour Organization. Uh, he's out there. Uh, talking to them and police impound 4,000 bags of fertilizer at Paga in the Upper East uh, region. Quite exciting morning, uh, Tuesday, a lot of issues to talk about. We certainly will have the time to talk about, but my guest to do this morning, the talking MP for Futu, a member of the uh, NPP, Honorable Alexander Theo Markin is here. Good morning. Yes, sir. And I hope you're doing great. By his grace, I'm fine. Gr grateful for your time with us. And then MP for Bongo, uh, Honorable Edward Bauer is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning. I hope you're doing great. Doing great. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll start the conversation. And uh, it's been in the news for quite some time. The issues about uh, uh, dams, the president has uh, promised um, investigations. Some communities complaining about uh, the dams and the president suggesting that uh, investigations needed to be done to find out exactly what these people, persons are doing. We'll take a look at that. Uh, this one is a story that you well uh, know. Uh, Honorable Edward Powers' uh, constituency, Bongo, is one of the areas where uh, one of the dams is in contention. He's here with me. Good morning. Let, let me start a conversation with you. Uh, the, the, the dam issue, the president's promised investigations. What is the problem? Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning to your viewers. Um, right before I go into the topic, let me also take this opportunity to uh, wish the BEC students who are, they started their exam yesterday with the uh, I think it was English and they did, they did English and Arabic. Today they are writing science and then BDT. So I wish them the best of luck. I believe that God willing, they will come out in flying colors. Um, now to the specific uh, uh, issue of dams. Right, I do know that very clearly uh, as part of uh, the current government when they were in opposition, one of their promises they made they indicated very clearly that they were going to ensure that at least in the three northern regions, uh, every village was supposed to get a dam. Mm. So it was one village, one dam. I recall that during the debate, um, during that run up to the 2016 elections, we had raised issues based on even just research and what that had been done by SADA. You recall that um, Sada had published a document that suggested that looking at the, the north general, the three northern regions, if we were going to construct what we call a dam, technically called a dam, that will have the reservoir, that will have the various canals, and they will have the areas that can be ir 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 irrigated, then they needed to approach, use what they, they call the cluster approach, where a dam a, a dam can be constructed in a place that you can have different villages all uh, benefiting from it because of the size of it and the catchment area. For example, if you take my constituency as we have what we call the Via Dam, mm. and I know you may have known that. Right. Via Dam ensures that, look, not only in Bongo District that you have villages, and so you have even some villages in Borga District that also enjoy from that. So you have not, not less than about 10 or 12 villages that can actually. Uh, uh, do that. And you have very large parcels of irrigate, uh, irrigated lands that people can go there and engage in, particularly in dry season farming. I believe that the rationale behind that was the, based on the fact that if you look at the 12 years, you know, unlike in the northern uh, southern sector where you have two rainy seasons, you know, you have the minor and the major. Mm. In the northern sector, it's just one, and it's just for three months. 
And after three months, the um, the nine months that you have is always dry. 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 And so usually irrigation is supposed to ensure that because predominantly the people in those areas are farmers, what happens is that you need to have a situation where the people can engage in some economic activities over the period. And that's where these issues of dams come in. The MPP indicated that no, this was not what they intended doing, and they were trying to ensure that every village would get that. We saw that practically it didn't even make sense because you had about 6,000 plus villages in the northern sector. And so to have 6,000 dams environmentally itself didn't make sense. But of course, they, they went on to say that's what they were going to do. So when the government came in, in an attempt to implement their, 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 their project, also decided now to go into, into they, 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 they put that under a particular ministry, that's a ministry for the special, special initiatives. initiatives. Which in itself was very funny. Because one, you realize that under the Ministry of Agri, there's, a, there's an authority known as the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority. And they are specialized, they have the technical know-how to know what constitutes either and what are the various specs if you want to construct a dam. Hmm. But they took this thing from the Ministry of Agri and from the Ghana Irrigation Development uh, Authority and took it to a ministry that did not even have the core competence to even implement this. Now they go ahead now to now say that they were going to implement it. One of the very first uh, communities together was a community in my particular area known as Ayopia. Ayopia. Where they did that. Right, you don't use three days to construct a dam. You go there with just bulldozers and graders. You just make sure that you create some cavity, as it were that can collect water. And suddenly you say that you have created a dam for the communities. Now you have, you have no canals. The, and most of these dams were, or sorry, what, we call, what they call dams, were constructed during the rainy season. And so it was obvious that if you did that, there was going to be some collection of water. But by November, December, the, 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 the ponds, I will call them, started drying up. And then even the technical underpinning to those construction was very terrible. You realize that if you ask any expert, he will tell you that for every dam to be constructed, you see, the gradient must always be very gentle. Such that, for example, if I'm moving in, it, it comes gradually and then you, it can then go up to a particular level. But you had this thing where the people just got there, sunk, just dug some, like wells, as it were, just sunk down there. So you had situations where kids, who will come and maybe just be by the water side before they realize they start walking in the water and pam, because the gradient is so steep, they go. And because of that, in Bongo in particular, we've lost three lives, school children. We've lost two in Ayopia and one in Kuyolongo. Besides, even Walawali, Wali, the same thing happened. I do remember that when, uh, what do you call it, when um, uh, the Minister for Agri came to Parliament, we asked him, what Basically, in terms of this dam, initially, because he indicated, it was a, a, a parliamentary question, he indicated that, look, his uh, uh, ministry was not in charge of the construction of those dams. However, he knows, based on the advice given to him by the Ghana, the Ghana uh, Irrigation Development Authority, he, f he said that for any serious dam to be constructed, you needed, I think he mentioned around five million there about, that you needed you to construct that. Our understanding, based on uh, the, the, the information that they give us, is that, they, that look, that they, are, uh, they, they spend between 250 to 500,000 Ghana cities for a dam or something like that. That's what they say. So obviously, that cannot even be a dam. Two, you see, you are constructing these dams in communities where the people know what a dam actually is, because they know that. If, if you take, for example, Upper East and the Northern Region. In Upper East, you have the Tamini that is being still under construction that started under the NDC. You have the Via Dam, and you have the Tonoda. So we know what a dam looks like. Besides that, in areas that we call even dark house, where those ones are mini ones, not up to the level of what we call really a dam, but dugouts, and they still even have canals that they can have irrigated land where they can cultivate during the dry season, particularly vegetables and other things. They know that because under the NDCU, under a project we call the Ghana Social Opportunities Project, and then the Ghana Commercial uh, Agriculture Project, that the GCAP uh, and then the GSOP, yes. these programs, they were World Bank su uh, supported project. We had a lot of dams that were created, and they were created in a strategy that, look, it was more of a labor-intensive one, where the people were given the opportunity to look, they were part of it. 
in terms of the concern. So there was a job creation aspect of it. You had an environmental aspect of it because they, there was also the issue of planting of trees in those particular areas, saying that they can protect the dam. And then you had the dam itself being constructed. In my own community, we had about four or five of them. That we had one in Kansoy, we had one in uh, uh, Kadare, we had one in, uh, what's the name again, uh, Borgo, and a few others. That we, under those projects, we did them. And it was not only in the Upper East region. We had them in all other three northern regions. So if you have a situation where a government comes and then goes on to say that, look, we are trying to create one dam, one, uh, one, uh, one village, one dam, and you put up one, um, what do you call it, um, ponds that cannot survive the dry season because it is only in the rainy season that you have collection of water. And all that they do is that they create, they breed mosquitoes even to, uh, to even worsen the plight of the people, kill their children. And then to a very large extent, they do not even get the use of it because you, 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 you claim lands from people because normally the, the land is provided by, by the communities with the hope that in return they will have some benefits from it. You don't get that. Mm -hmm. So, and we, we believe that all these things is also to a very large extent being shadowed with some level of corruption. You know that there were some, you know, remember the, the chief who had indicated in Do Dolgo, that's in uh, Dominic Ayane's constituency, about the fact that he came and saw them and the way they did. And then the watch, uh, the, sorry, the contractor's own narration suggests that there's something that is terrible about it. And so I'm not even surprised that the president himself says that he's going to investigate. He's going to investigate. The only reason why you will want to investigate something is that you have a suspicion that there's something wrong. That the, you have been able to create some level of, uh, uh, some reason to go into it to get the details of it. And so, as a country, look, first, we think that the officers who are involved in the implementation of this project must answer to Ghanaians. We think that the government itself, because of its, I mean, uh, 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 the, for lack of uh, a better word, uh, the disrespect for rural communities, and the fact that they think that they do not even appreciate things and whatever I do for them, they will appreciate. Or maybe they will, they will say, I'm doing well. Because of that disrespect. And to a very large extent also, because of the fact that you have a very non-performing government who do not even know which office. I mean, because why do you create parallel structures? When you already have structures, you have workers that you pay every month. And I gave you the example of the Ghana, uh, what do you call it, uh, Education, uh, Education uh, Development Authority. Then you leave them and go and create another structure, another bureaucracy, pay them to do jobs that to a very large extent, are, these are jobs that, they're just a nuisance to the environment, they do not help anybody, and all they do is that it's a, it's a conduit to spend. Because if you look at the budgets okay. that have been pushed into this, you realize that this was an opportunity to siphon money at the expense of the ordinary person, particularly the villages in the three northern regions. Let me get Honorable uh, Afinu uh, Market to come in. Honorable Afinu Market, a very, a very laudable thing uh, if we want to use agriculture to develop our economy. It will allow all year round farming. Perhaps is, is implementation the problem? Well, uh, Right, let me uh, do the introduction he did. Uh, mm. I think uh, wishing our young ones the best in their first major external exam is appropriate. I therefore take this opportunity to wish all those writing the BEC the best of luck. I had the opportunity to interact with them. And let me, on this occasion, also commend the Municipal Education Directorate they engage them in a series of uh, uh, counseling, right. prepare them so well. Uh, an opportunity we didn't have in 94, where they spoke to them, counseled them. Um, they had I hear some people organize mock exams for yeah, this. Yeah, that, 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 that was, in that was also done, mm. and all that. So I commend a Futu Municipal Education Directorate for that initiative. Mm. It was good, I mean, morale booster all the teachers for their time. I visited them in the various schools and I realized that they were committed to the, 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 the success of their kids. Then, on top of it, the hope that the free SHS brings. Mm. Just yesterday, there was a constituent who came to me for money to trade. And through the interaction, I realized that she spoke so well. And uh, I said, ah, have you finished the uni? Her confidence level, she said, oh, 
I couldn't go to secondary school. There was no money. So I stayed with an auntie in Tema, went to Takradi, mm -hmm. Ashama, and all that. Today, because of that bold step taken by this government, no child can say that because my parents could not afford, I am sitting at home. So although we may have teaching problems with the implementation of free SHS, suffice to add that it is a very giant step that all of us must commend the government because it will benefit the ordinary Ghanaian. At least we know that initially the classrooms were overcrowded, there were no beds and all that, all others contributed. Then this uh, issue of uh, double track to give space and all that, it has its own teaching problem. But by and large, once we are committed to it and we are constructively criticizing the implementation, I believe that the ordinary Ghanaian will benefit from free SHS. And these young ones, none will be left out. So uh, I wish them well once again. Now, let me come to the issue of the one village, one dam. First, it is not easy for a government to concede and order an investigation. So for the government to concede that there is a challenge. There's a challenge, yeah. So let us, in all sincerity, address them. Look at all these researches that are coming out. People, our democracy is growing. We cannot pretend on the issues. So if, for instance, you say you've constructed a kilometer of a road, and there are portals, and people are talking about it, you cannot just downplay it. In all sincerity, if you tell the people that, I will look at it, they will respect you. That, oh, yes, the portals are there. But you wouldn't merely say that you have constructed a road. So whether there are portals or, and all that, you don't mind. We recently talked about uh, a footbridge at Medina. Right. Today is being done. So a genuine concern. But three are now completed. Exactly. So at least Ghanaians will now say, that, oh, you admit that there is a problem. You are looking at it. So, um, you see, if we reduce it to the usual NDC MPP banter, the people will not benefit. Because, you see, in a campaign, we told the people of Ghana what we wanted to do for them. We said, and like he rightly pointed out, in the three northern regions or that part of the country, you have over nine months of a dry weather. So farmers are in peril. They need water. They need irrigation. So out of the research that the MPP did, we came out with this policy that, look, let us address those needs. Again, it's, it is not new. The issue of irrigation is not new. He talked about some intervention, JSOP and JCAP and all that. In the Achampo regime, my Ghana water, we visited um, Navrungo recently. We were told that, look, the in the Achampo era, yeah. there were these irrigation activities. They did. Yeah. Kwame Nkrumah's time, they did it. But has it, has it really benefited the people? So to boldly say that, look, when we come, we'll take this thing up and give it a special attention, it's not misplaced. And nobody should, I mean, make mockery of it or attempt to score partisan political points out of this. That, after all, there were existing structures and that merely talking about it was just for vote. No, it cannot be. We meant business when we said we would introduce this. Mm -hmm. Has it been done? Yes. Are there some implementation challenges? Yes. Is government ready to do it? Government is determined. The president himself, not a ministerial uh, announcement, a presidential announcement that we will look into it. And once that has been, that pronouncement has been made, you should be sure that it will be done. Now, my brother mentioned Sada. If, to me, in parliament, in the third parliament, when the Sada issue came up, if the NDC as a government had boldly admitted that SADA resources were abused and that implementation was not being done properly wouldn't be where we are. For instance, for instance, government borrowed at a compound interest. Government issued bonds. And the, 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 the 
the, the coupon, the charge on that was compounded. So within three years, 999 million that we took were paying in excess of 300 million. It's at bad. I mean, finance ministry came to parliament with the records. We disbursed to companies so that they would implement an initiative to benefit the people in small scale industry, the people engaged in agriculture. What did we see? Ministerial inquiry came out with a report that look, some of the projects were not even done, yet monies were paid. As we speak, what became of the other thing? So let's not reduce the debate as though it was better yesterday and it is worse today. If you've had your eight years as a party, you had every opportunity, and somebody is just in the first term, four years, in the third year, each campaign promise, you mark us, are you doing it? We are on. Have we finished? No. But are we on? Have we demonstrated good faith? Yes, we have. So you cannot dribble the ordinary Ghanaian by trying to create the impression that, oh, this government has misled you. Indeed, this government has been that consistent. We cannot claim perfection. Never can it be. But at least we know that there is a commitment to implementing the major policy initiatives that were embedded in our, in our, in our, in our, in our manifesto. manifesto. When it comes to the debate, you can say what you want to say, but let's pin it, let's reduce it to fact. Because with facts, you cannot play politics with it. Are we implementing the one village, one dam? Yes. There are issues? Yes, we concede. Are we determined to address them? Yes. Can we give ourselves, say, three months and see what report will come out? Whether or not, indeed, the concerns that you are raising, that maybe the dams are not being properly done, somebody is digging something and all that, the, 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 the suitability mm. of what we are doing for the benefit of the people is what we are looking at. If it doesn't meet the standard, or at least for it's not fit per purpose, you are free to talk about it. And that is the essence of our democracy. But to merely mm. attempt to condemn it and create the impression that you did it yesterday, if you were doing it, if the NDC in its eight years really seriously looked at the issue of agriculture in the three northern regions, when they had the opportunity with SADA, if they had seriously looked at it, it would have been a news. It would have been a new initiative for us to look at it. So, I mean, with all due respect to that mosquito, the, the dams are breeding mosquitoes and people are dying, those are political talks. Let's get serious. Is the, is the people, the people, the people want, want to have their agro-business mm. growing. Mm. And that is what is important. Okay. Let yes, me get yes, about to react. Just speak mm. is it first? Let's put it, because he talks about facts. Mm. First and foremost, let's state that there has not been a single dam that has been constructed in the three northern regions. I put that they question are, to him. Yes. You see, they are, they are not dams. That's the first thing. And Afenio is welcome to my constituency. I will host him to see it. There are no dams. Those, are no, those things are just, they are ponds. The best of mine. It's just like somebody doing a fish you pond see. in his house. They are, they are not dams. That's the first okay, thing. But they can store Second water. point. Ah, yes. I mean, see, they can store water. Okay, but, so you see, but you see, when you construct a dam for uh -huh. irrigational purposes, there are certain basic specs you need. Those things are not there. Okay. That's the first point. So they can, uh, you hold, uh, yes. just gradually. Let me, so, no, uh, no, 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 I'll come. I'll come. I'll come. Yeah, I'll so come to you. They can store water, but your worry is that the water might uh, escape. Is, is that the worry? No, the reason why you create a dam mm. for irrigational purpose is that, look, you, you want to ensure, you are intervening in natural processes. Right. That, look, during the rainy season, you have rain to be able to farm. Store it. But during the dry season, because there's no... The nine months. The nine months you're not going to have. The water should be available for you to irrigate the land and then uh, and cultivate it. That's you right. understand the point? That's the that is the purpose of it. Right. Now, you have a situation where during the rainy season, yes, there will be water collected there. Dry season that you need the water to really work with. 
you don't have it. It's not there. It's not there. So it doesn't, uh, that's why I say it is not a dam. That's the first thing. My second point, when I indicated very clearly, I talked about the issue of Sada. I said, look, first, let's put it on record that when the issues of Sada came, he says, a former president took charge of it and said, look, all those people were dismissed. And that's how uh, Chasabore and Co. were brought in. It was a Chasabore, sir, with the help of the donor agencies. They had a technical document that talked about the strategies we needed to use to ensure that if we were going to create dams in the three northern regions, the strategy to use. So there was a document that was there to guide. Three, nobody has indicated that the initiative being made by the government that we were going to create dams in the three northern regions was, was bad. Indeed, he himself, tracing from Nkrumah up to uh, uh, Akufo governments have made efforts to ensure that they do that. And that's why even under the NDC, using the World Bank, under what the projects that the GTAP, uh, GCAP and the GSOP, we were able to create a number of dams in the, in the, in the, in the what they call it, in the, uh, uh, in the three northern, uh, northern regions. But you see, when you, when you have a manifesto that you want to implement, and you, you state that manifesto, it doesn't give you the right that you ignore all technical advice because you have won power. And because you have won power, you block your ears to even sound counseling. I say this because when they started, is you know, your peer. Argument is it, he was uh, too no, uh, to, uh, no, 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 I mean, right, no, you got that. I'll no, come to you. you, no, you I mean, I thought it was a no, no, quick no, intervention. Right. But if that's. No, but you are finished. No, no problem. If it's a quick intervention. I am coming to you in a couple of minutes. You see, because he had indicated, he had indicated, he had made a point that, look, that, look, uh, people can criticize and do this, and, but to condemn it, but, uh, to condemn it was something that uh, would maybe play politics with it. That was what the point he made. But I'm just trying to state clearly that, look, Ayopia was the first place. They had, you know, that was the first place. That was how the president went there. It was in my constituency. They had that fanfare in the place. And then all over uh, Ghana, the radio stations were saying that oh, they, had, they had delivered one, uh, one dump to my, one of my uh, communities in the, uh, what they call it, in the, the constituency. We had raised these issues that, look, from what we have seen, that is not a dump. So as a president who was a listening president and was ready to investigate, should not have waited for a number of them to be littered around the three northern regions, only for you to come and say, and it is just because chiefs started talking about it, then you say you will investigate it. We had raised these issues and said that, look, what they were putting there and pretending to be calling them dams were not dams. I remember when the Walawale issue happened, when the child died in Walawale over one of those uh, ponds they had created, the people addressed a press conference and this was about six months ago. The president never said anything until the heat started coming up. So you can pretend that, yes, you are putting up an initiative, but you are ready for criticism to improve upon them. You have already looked in this based on even the figures they are saying. We are talking of millions that have gone down the drain without serving the purposes for which the, uh, the, 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 the money were approved by parliament for them. And the last but not the least, yes, you want to, you have a manifesto to, uh, to what they call it, to implement. Why would you leave agencies that have been trained, that have the core competence to implement such projects? You leave them, go and create another ministry, employ your apparatus, your political apparatus to be there to implement a project that they do not have key uh, competences on. So that's why I said, what happened to Ghana uh, Irrigation Development Authority that the government never saw it wise? that we could, we could tap into their expertise, their counseling, and supervision in ensuring that we deliver what we call dams. These are the points we are making. So when you go and you start talking about company interests and what and what they gave money out to people, that is not what we are talking about. We are talking about the fact that you have deceived Ghanaians, you have made Ghanaians to lose money, and that in a very serious democracy, people should be moving to courts by now. People should be prosecuted. But I'm off in your market. The, the purpose, I, I guess we all know, is to ensure that in the, in the nine months that the, the, it's dry, we have water. The, the, the suspicion, let me put it that way, is that it, it, we might not achieve that. All right. Without um, shouting and without being overly emotional and speaking to the issues, 
One. Who is shouting at me? I've not, I've not said that. I've made an absolute statement. <laughs> when you say you've made that, but when you I've, made, I've made an absolute statement. Make the point. No, no, but <laughs> make see, the what point. Is this stop, and stop what is casting this? those in Nyondos. Stop casting those in Nyondos. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Baba. What is this? You uh, allow oh, all of our future versions to talk. No, stop casting this in Nyondos. What is this with your left hand to your colleague? I'm a left-handed person, so what do I do? No, What do I do? You have said this before to me, Baba. I'm a left-handed person. I don't know, Baba. Please allow him. Allow him. Don't have your marking. Please go ahead. Okay. So, like I said before, without being emotional on this matter mm. and without shouting, I think the point must be made that one, there is no such evidence that this government, in implementing the one village one dam, has ignored technical advice. There's no such fact. If there is any such thing, I would want to challenge my respected colleague and friend, to make that available. His, his argument is that no, no. Ghana Irrigation Authority no, well, I'm saying is a huge I am, I am, body, I am but saying, they are not part of the process. I am saying that that is not, that is but not... So, so, that, so, uh, no, 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 please, allow, you know, no, 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 that there is no such evidence, and in fact, it is not factual, that government has ignored technical advice it in implementing. Oh, no, oh, no, I don't want you to come in. Please don't disrupt me. Mm. Uh, 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 please go on. Right. Two. It is their argument that the dams being that the implementation, what is being done, is not fit for purpose. That is their argument. It won't achieve the purpose. I'm saying that it. to it's them, not, it's not fit for no, It won't achieve that oh, purpose of providing water in oh, the dry oh, season. Um, right. That is not their argument. That's the oh, argument. That's the argument. That that's is, what he said. Well, yeah. you ask him, has it been done? Yeah, he said it's been done. It's been done. But? But you have issues. It will not achieve the purpose. Okay, so, done. and if it will not achieve the purpose, has government shut its eyes? At least that is the point where you must be fair in your assessment. So what has government done? Oh, no. oh, you, no, know, oh, no, right. you don't have a right to be a asking what questions. Has, no, what has government oh, no, done? What has government done? Mm. You, you don't have a right to be asking <laughs> questions on this platform. Allow a number of your marking to go on. One of your marking, please go on. Normally, when you're losing a debate, you have to sort <laughs> it. <laughs> let's go on. One of your marking, uh, we're, 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 we're battling with time, so let's go on. Right. So, the usual NDC strategy, mm. you have nothing to say, but you want to be heard. You, at one point, said that we have done nothing on one village, one dam. At one point, this, is, this was the language of the party. Today, when the Minister for Special um, Initiative, Initiative <laughs> went up north, and they started seeing pictures, the farmers were talking about evidence of it. They changed the narrative. And I'm saying that for me to come and sit here and tell Ghanaians that, oh, everything has been all successful, <laughs> will be very misleading. Because Mr. President himself has conceded and said that, look, we have to look into the concerns being raised. Now, you are saying that there must be prosecution of who and who. I am interested. Who has done wrong? And what prosecution are you calling for? The contractors? The minister? Or who? In any event, you were here a moment ago conceding that your government dismissed some people from office. This is what you said. Today you are calling for prosecution. Granted that you have the basis to call for this prosecution. I don't know, and I leave it to you to mount your justification. But tell me, how many prosecutions, how many prosecutions took place under SADA? Today you are saying that- Mr. Boga Pele is in jail for No, me. no, please. Uh, that NYEP, NYEP, mm. GIDA, National Youth uh, Employment uh, <coughs> uh, Program, that is a, uh, don't mix it. The, and don't the, confuse the, it. No, don't mix it. 
I am talking about the <laughs> SADA, the, 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 the coupons we issued mm. to raise some uh, 300 million cities for that project. So which of the projects? There so, were a lot of so projects. It's, it, it links so which to of SADA? the projects? Oh, okay. No, 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 he said, although the money was disbursed, he, as a chief executive, didn't know who took the money, and the tractors had not come. That was one. And if you wanted, when was that? When was this? Uh, when the state parliament. Come? Okay, the uh, state parliament. quickly, quickly. Uh, on the other your market, to, uh, quickly I'll, I'll wrap up. To Let me take some questions and uh, 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 some um, Two. comments and come back. Storage. You committed funds to building warehouses. Another ten million. When they came, when the auditors audited the, 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 the books, that one too had not been done. How long then have you been in government? Uh, on, on I will be compelled to, <laughs> to shut your microphone. If no, you I said, how long have you been no, in government? If you don't stop if interrupting. Okay. So, all of her, please wrap up for me. Let me two. take some comments and comments. And the famous Guinea files that we were told flew to Burkina. <laughs> you okay. want, you which, are saying this on television. You want to talk about this. No, no, no. What I'm saying that, as a matter of fact, these were the responses that came from... I'm not talking about a radio conversation. I'm talking about parliamentary committee meeting officials of SADA. Mm. And they're telling us this. These are records. With all due respect, that, you were not with that, us at the time. The, the committee said... Uh, not the Guinea committee, the officials who came. You remember? Is, is they were asking. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, How can the committee say so? I'm saying that. I'm saying that. I'm that. But so, one official is right. Marking, please. Uh, they, right. Uh, yeah, the they, UDS, they, they the UDS right. report. Yeah. Right. The UDS report. Uh, uh, Honorable Bawa, uh, they, uh, allow the right. viewers to. Do you know what you are doing? Somebody uh, is misconduct. Oh, stop it. Then you are encouraging him. That's what you are doing. <laughs> no, no, no. That's no, what you are no. Because you must uh, be uh, firm uh, enough for uh, him uh, to stop uh, it. Uh, because uh, I've decided when he spoke, uh -huh. please, when he spoke, sometimes we realize that viewers don't like heckle interjection here and there. Right. We started the morning. He started, made his point. I kept quiet. I took note. He started this unruly mm. um, uh, heckling. If you are firm, you will stop. But you, you seem to be encouraging you, 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 I don't and know. And then what, when he raises this question, I, you, you lose the same question to ask no, me. I, I, I was only to asking you a question talk, talk, talk. that what is, is in the public talk. debate about what the standard. This uh, right. guinea fowl thing is a you joke. Mean, I am so, showing you. I don't, uh, on Honorable Bauer, Honorable Bauer, please. Honorable Bauer, please. Honorable Bauer, please. Allow me to. Right. Let me stay the fact. Let me stay the fact. Honorable Bauer, please allow me. I'll get you the time to talk. I'm saying that you mentioned that the committee told Parliament that I the said, Guinea fowl flew, don't, don't, and I'm don't, saying don't, that don't misquote me. Okay. Don't misquote okay. me. I'm saying, uh -huh. as a member of the committee, right? We met officials of, of Sada. Sada, right? When they came, one, they denied the tractor because we had, they, they were, they, we had a report with us. Okay. We were interrogating the report. This 300 million, the disbursement, the 30 million plus for tractors. Where are the tractors? The mm. man says he's unaware. Mm. You had this for warehouse. Where, where, how was it done? I am unaware. Give me foul. Where is it? And as a chief executive, now get it right. Right. He said his food officers said the initial uh, bets that came flew. He said it. Out, of course. Why? What, so it's, it's on record. Ah, what are you talking about? I'm why asking did you, you. Why did okay. you? I am, don't ask me. He said it is on record. Call him. Okay. Because no, I'm saying that good because you said it. So I want to. I wanted to take some. And I'm saying our, that our later, are. government conceded. Now let me come to the point. Mm. Government itself set up a ministerial committee. Okay. To look at the issue of Sada, government itself came out with adverse findings. Now I brought this in because he had argued that there must be that there were dismissals, and I'm saying that after the dismissals, the issue of the financial loss to the state which the ministerial inquiry itself considered mm. had been occasioned, what steps were taken on it? That is my question. I'm grateful. Let me take some comments and come back. Yes, Aisha, right. welcome again. Let's go through some of the comments mm. so that the hot studio discussions can continue.
This one says the NDC claimed this government have not done anything and yet went ahead to accuse Akufuado of shoddy work on the One Village One Dam project. So my question is, how can you accuse someone of shoddy work on a project you claim is not in existence? This is coming from George Kwarteng from Adenta. Uh, this one also says, good morning, TV3. I don't understand what Honorable Bauer is saying. The dam being constructed in Zebela will be so much beneficial to the people when completed. So the NDC man should not sound pessimistic. We in Zebula are happy with that. Abbas Yaya sent that one to us. This one says, hi, Bright. I would really be surprised if Ghanaians should vote again for a double talk party like NPP in 2020 elections. Fact is, the party is full of deceitful people. When NDC was in power, they were quick to compare Jika's project against the NDC government. Hence, would be praising Jika, an organization from Japan, to high heaven. Now in power, when we're pointing out to them the best way of doing the dam, uh, they said Jika's way uh, cost uh, 2 million CDs. Just listen to them. They say, oh, no, Jika is, uh, Jika's own is different. Uh, can Ghanaians continue to believe in such a deceitful NPP government? Papa PC was asking that question. This one says, I want to know why the president couldn't cut short for the construction of the RCC of the newly created Northeast region. Could naming the regional capital be a camouflage? Uh, Kalu from Nalergu sent that one to us. Good morning, Bright. One village, one down project in Bongo District are yielding results at Phil Cabre, uh, Ayopia, and Kugelu. Uh, he says, please correct my MP, Honorable Edward Bauer, that none of these dams dried out. So he should always come home to cross-check his facts. James Apesiga sends that one from Phil. I hope I got that uh, right. This one is coming from Ali Mentor. He says, uh, the NPP government has deceived Ghanaians. They have failed woefully of your colossal promises they made. This government is a total disaster. Uh, dams turn out to be dug out. SP should start investigations into this and stop chasing Ayariga. Uh, that is coming from Ali Menta. Uh, this one says, good morning, TV3. This government is full of deceit and lies. A contractor who has constructed three supposed dams in Upper East said on City News that the contract agreement is a dug out and not a dam. Philip from Ying from... Uh, Tongu sent that one. This one uh, says, the media since its inception has been of great help despite some few odds. It has given voice to the voiceless and highlighted wrongs in government. Talking about corruption, the media is doing what it can, but it seems corruption has to do with only politicians. But no, the ordinary citizen is also involved. Uh, BEC and WASI has its share of irregularities. The education sector seems to be preventing leakage of papers. GJA can assign one of its members to an exam center, and this would go a long way to reduce assistance schools, give people during examinations. Um, these NDC people should let our ears rest. There is a difference between a dam and an irrigation scheme. Uh, he should consult his dictionary for the meanings of the two. Um, good morning, TV3. The MPP shouldn't deceive people with your so-called doves and factories. The hardships is unbearable. They should stop the talking and let the economy reflect in the lives of Ghanaians. This one is coming from Paul uh, from Bumpurugu. Uh, please, TV3, try and get the contract document and you'll get to know that the, uh, uh, the dugouts were awarded and not dams. Philip from Ying uh, again sent that one. Mr. Bright, it's true that we, the NDC, as uh, a part, must work hard and uh, do investigations into these false dams. Uh, this super incompetent government use our money recklessly, saying uh, on social media they are creating dams. And so, Bright, these are some of the messages we have received from our viewers at home. I mean, we'll read them as. Uh, we we'll get more and more into the show. But let's wrap up on this one. 180 MPs said to be voted out uh, 2020 election. Approval ratings of MPs. It's a story I'm sure you well know. Uh, the Public Council and Department of the University of Ghana did the research and said that out of um, only 95 out of the 275 have a 50 and above percent approval of their constituents. That's a story.
What about Finback? Are you one of them? I've not read the report. <laughs> but um, yeah, you're certainly not one of them. Man. Um, our work is difficult. Um, yeah. Uh, people say that. Have you told more than the people? No, I, I, people say that. You raise uh, expectations. People, people, people say like. that uh, <laughs> our woes are self inflicted. Yeah, exactly. And I, I agree with them. I agree with them. That is true. Uh, you want um, to serve the people. You see the challenges. Mm. You sort of think that you can solve it. And uh, you raise your hopes. Right. Then you come uh, into contact with the reality. And there you have a problem. But I think that it is good. Such researches are good for, for our democracy. Mm. It's a bitter pill. Uh, I hope uh, that the, the, the researchers will furnish each one of us a yeah, copy yes. of the findings they had. Uh, the in final our various details. Yes, yes, in our various constituencies. In fact, right, when I started uh, my political uh, activities in Efutu, I had an old man a retired teacher who came to me and said, I should add research as part of it. Because if I don't, so from my assemblyman days, all the way through, and it helped. If you do research, it helped. It may be expensive. Mm. Sometimes you go and meet people, they say, oh, all manner of sweet things. Let somebody go in there. When a person gets in there, he's told the truth. The then you have story. to find a way of going back to correct it and getting genuine feedback. But you see politicians, we don't like the truth sometimes, you know? <laughs> you know, this when is you're being told you are Yeah, 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 especially when they say, you know, you are losing and you say you have some one million. <laughs> when you are losing, you say you are in a comfortable lead. When you say, so you want a third round, you want, and you know, you make it. It is normal. Right. It's ambition. You get emotional with ambition. So you don't want to believe and all that. But it's good for our democracy. Mm. I think that we should engage the people the more. Because the days that you will just merely get into politics, wait for campaign. Now, the social media world, expectations are high. The same people, they want you to pay school fees. The same people are saying that construct a road, go and pay rent. In fact, uh, three days ago, I told somebody <laughs> that I can't pay your rent. You told them you will pay. I, no, 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 no. I'm not what I'm trying to say is, you, no, no, you told I, them you'll be oh, there no, for I'm, them. On no, no, campaign, you say that. You say you that. Say that. You because you'll be there for no, them. So right. Rent is bad. Right. I mean, uh, let, let, let's be open. <laughs> I told the person, I can't pay the rent. Mm. Because you're the same person you are being asked. This BEC, MPs are spending. Yeah, yeah. You go, and then again, Occasionally, you the same media. You go to parliament and say, parliament is empty. Yesterday, I was supposed to travel mm. to China. I told Mr. Speaker, Mr. You, Speaker, you I won't go. You know, because going for two weeks, go and spend time in ECOWAS parliament, delegation here and there, you have to travel. I realized that my predecessors, Mike Kama, Owusu uh, Dr. Yebia, suffered from that because they were engaged more in government business. Than being in the Like, like uh, Mike Kama. He was a cabinet minister. Travel here, and the people say, Yehun, and I told man, me, and you travel now, Mutel and Craig. You know, who's right there? He was a civil servant. His was worse. He was focused on government policy. So the attacks, ah, we are looking for him, we can't find him, and all that. I looked at that, I said, Look, one hour, go, come. You go in the evening, leave at dawn. But what of those in the north? The Western north, Volta, Eastern region. It's not an easy matter. Especially when you people are saying on radio, I've not read the report, mm. but people are saying that majority of the people are saying that they don't see their It's MP. one of the criteria. Exactly. For the and then people also want project. But our constituents are not telling people that if you pay the rent, <laughs> if you pay school fees, if you deal with the low hanging fruit, it's part of achievement. But they take that one. When it's time for election, they say, <laughs> when, they, when they, they take that one, when it's time for election, they won't say, oh, how dare you pay for it? Uh, then they say that, that where is the road? Where is the classroom? The is but it is part of the system. I'm sure those who are also lacing their boots, they will <laughs> take advantage of these things. And, these things. and, and, on, and then, But then I will say to, in conclusion on this point, I will mm. say that it's not too late. If the report comes, we get it. We work on it. Assuming mm. that in your constituency, all manner of negative things are being said about you, take it as a bitter pill. Two years is enough time. At least one thing I know, and I'm <clears> not <throat> being partisan, one thing I know 
is that as a result of the free SHS, the burden on us in respect of school fees at least has gone down. And that one we all concede. Because recently, those doing the, the WASI, the SHS3 student, mm. the NVTI people, they come. School fees, the registration, even BEC, you have some people coming to you. So it tells university recently at UEW, the number of WhatsApp. For fees. Me, no, no, because they're going to write the end of semester. Yeah. And those who owe before. the pressure on me, right? We paid and paid and paid and paid at the point I told some student that you go and plead, look for money when the common fund comes. Because the common fund cannot solve, common fund, how much is it? It can't solve that problem. So it is also telling us that to get into active partisan politics, parliamentary politics, you need to be a businessman, you need to have your own resources to spend. Because if you are a civil servant, you are a career uh, professional who, out of ambition, your people love you, you get in there, they will remove you before your your your, your Not because your you tenor. are incapable. But. Not because you are incapable. They don't want to listen to the bro <laughs> They don't that. want to listen to who is the best. They want to see you. So if you are not a businessman, if you don't have the network, Okay. To raise resources, okay. right, there will be problems. I hear when uh, uh, someone's soup doesn't cook well, it is blamed on the MP. <laughs> no, no, but I think also, right, the yeah. last point, I mm. think that the referendum to uh, deal with the issue of uh, DCs, yeah. DCs and, and because DCs. you see, that's currently, that's DCs that's are not yeah. elected by the people. Right. So the pressure it's is okay. on... Only the MPs. So it will take some you, burden off Oh, of course, okay. there will be a okay, shared great. responsibility because great. now they see that we voted for You see, the whole thing is legitimate expectation. Okay. Once we have voted for you, mm. it, you came to us so we can come to you. If you do another research, you realize that out of 10, just two would want to go to their DCs or MCs for oh, support. Hell. Right. Then again, assembly members, the assembly concept, we have to look at it. Right. The assembly concept is to have that direct grassroots interaction. Mm. Assembly members don't have anything. Mm. So they are also virtually rendered redundant. Mm. So they they are elected. If we are able to change our structure. And get them some funds. Get them some funds. Then if there's some... No. Yeah, so that we have assembly members, we have M M M M MMDCs, we have MPs. That three-tier chain, it will be shared responsibly. Then in that case, the burden may somewhat reduce for you to con concentrate on your parliamentary constitutional mandate. I know about but for coming. now, it is Wahala. We have to cope with it. <laughs> if you can't stand the heat, you get up. The, the report isn't all that gloomy. It says that the MPs performed well, for instance, in the area of uh, provision of water. Uh, they, they say the MPs have done very well. But you know, the NDC MPs <laughs> are rated better because you know when you are in opposition, the expectation is not as high. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. I have a wrap up for me. You have some sympathy. <laughs> because you are in opposition, you have some sympathy. That, that's a fact. I have a wrap up for me. They know your party is on government, so the expectation is quite low. I think that I think that uh, African Americans have done justice to me. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah. Uh, basically, um, I see this report first as a feedback to us. Because, um, because you've been heckling me, you just said my name is Marcus. <laughs> because you've been heckling, you will not even pay attention to my name. That's what you just said. Calling so, me Marcus, is that my name? Is it not? Afeno, you know, Afeno, my Afeno name Markin. His I name is Marcus. But why did you say Marcus? I said Afeno Marcus. Oh, you, you didn't even hear that. <laughs> the, 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 the. Proceed this one. Okay, I'll let's go. Although Peter so, himself is, is watching us, the MP so, for Bungo. Maybe we, I will, I'm getting him to come there and speak on the um, the dam issue. Uh, the uh, DC the, yeah. on the dam issue. Yes. You see, uh, let me first start by indicating that, look, uh, the research that has been done by um, the, the political, political science, science department, for me, is a, a feedback and a very good one. I want to hope that going forward, parliament as an institution will engage them to give us specifics. Because in very serious democracies, uh, you will have uh, lawmakers having very sound uh, and very good, uh, what do you call it, research persons who would give them such feedbacks for them to be able to improve upon their, 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 their activities and maybe their, their interface they have with their constituents. So for them to go ahead to do this, for I think that first we should thank them and, and see how we can engage them. Sure. More. Two, um, I also think that, is it, yes, uh, Afenio uh, Markins had said that, that look, some of these things are self-inflicted. If you look at 
when we are campaigning, we, we campaign more as development agents. And the fact that we will provide you this, we will provide you that, we will provide you this. What we do not stop to ask ourselves is that, how are you going to provide that? Because what resources do you have control over to be able to say that this is exactly what I'm going to do? It is only when you then enter into parliament and you come to realize that uh, things are very terrible. It's true. And it's, and it's the truth. Um, and so maybe going forward, we need to start looking at how we, we, we go on the political platforms to mm. campaign. But it is sometimes in desperations. You say things that you do not believe that's uh, what they call it. I mean, somebody, uh, there's a story of somebody saying that, look, uh, how come that you are not, we do not have a harbor here, don't worry. Meanwhile, that was a landlocked area. He said, don't worry, I'll make sure there's a harbor here. As how you are bringing the harbor, you nobody knew how you were going to do it. But basically, that is it. But I, 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 I have a, I have a, I think that they, particularly in the rural areas, but I think even some of the uh, sub-urban areas, urban, you see, areas. poverty is so endemic to the extent that when people really come out, queue, and cast their vote for you, their expectations that they are sourcing their very livelihood on you, that you must take care of it. It is not because they just want to mess you up. But they are so desperate that they want to see an avenue where they can get help. Mm. And so, for example, uh, issues of school fees, very legitimate. There are people that if you, as an MP, you don't intervene, they won't go to school. Right. Sometimes health issues, if you don't intervene, they will die. You understand that? So these things are happening. Of course, there are some of the things like, oh, I'm doing my uh, daughter's adoring and other things. These are things that you can use your own discretion as an MP to say, look, okay. this is not a priority area. Okay. But I think that, I know that you, you are running yes, out I have, Yeah, I have to catch I think yourself. that um, as, as, uh, as MPs, we should uh, make an effort to engage these people. Mm. Because I was reading through the report, I wanted to see whether there were specific names and other things. But no, I think no that maybe names. in their raw data, in their raw data, they will they will have some of these things that they yeah. can share with I'm us. Sure they that know the can, yes, yes. And then we'll I'm grateful. He's MP for Bongo, uh, member of the NDC, Honorable uh, Edward Bauer, Honorable uh, Alexander Finomak, MP for Futu, a member of the MPP. Grateful for your Tuesday morning. Uh, stay right here. Uh,